Thank you for tuning into Green Gossip podcast by the Disposal Company powered by Vanity Wagon. At Green Gossip, we explore childhood memories, family values, work experiences, and everything that has helped shape the sustainability vision of people behind your favorite brands. Today, we have with us the co-founders of Wicked Good, Monish and Somalia. Wicked Good is a D2C health food brand that is on a mission to make everyday eating guilt-free and change the way the world consumes comfort food. So let's welcome Monish and Somalia. So hello Monish and Somalia. Today we have the co-founders of Wicked Good with us. Thank you guys for joining me today. Thank you. Thank you so much for the opportunity, Bhagishri. Really excited for this conversation. Thank you. Thank you, Bhagishri. And good morning to you. Good morning, guys. Okay, so first of all, tell me how do you both meet? Like, how do you know each other? Wow. I think the catalyst is absent from here. We miss you, woman. Okay, woman is a real catalyst here. Uh, because uh, I think uh, I met woman through a common friend and uh, multiple other sources okay and then uh, i think somalia and women they connected over linkedin i will let that story be uh, completed and addressed by somalia uh, but yeah it's because of women that somalia and i met okay uh, previously uh, very very uh, interestingly and coincidentally we belong to uh, two different spheres of the same industry so he comes from a media background and i come from a creative advertising and a strat background so there have been uh, conversations where we have both realized that we have been at the same gathering, we have been at the same party, we have been at the same congregation, but we never knew each other. So yes, uh, Somalia and I, we met because of women. Yeah, yeah, it is it is quite interesting. And uh, uh, like, you know, actually, Monish and Bhuman met very differently. Like, you know, it, it was a very different route. Bhuman and I met in a, with a very different route. We actually were connected on LinkedIn like, for about two years before uh, we actually started uh, talking to each other and uh, Bhuman had reached out when he was building the core team and uh, uh, like you know that is that is exactly how we started speaking and like you know things just uh, materialized very quickly. So that means like although you guys met at let's say like these common events and maybe like just knew each other uh, on internet but you know not in real life. So, so both of you individually tell me like about your childhood like where did you guys grow up or uh, what was you know like was also there like any conversation around sustainability or like climate action or uh, why you guys were go- growing so i uh, like you know i i grew up in delhi uh, bageshri i was born in kolkata uh, i was uh, my first two years of my life was spent in this small uh, manufacturing and shipping town called Haldia in uh, West Bengal. Thereafter, we moved to Delhi. I was in Delhi for about 12 years. My primary education was all in Delhi. Like, you know, I was in Delhi till a very senior uh, standard. Thereafter, uh, we moved to Baroda in Gujarat. I was there for about three years. I was in Bhuvaneshwar for about two years in Odisha. Thereafter, we moved to, uh, I moved for education to Pune uh, in Maharashtra which is where I spent a good five years educating myself. I then uh, moved to uh, like, you know, the corporate world through like, you know, in Pune. Thereafter, I lived in Bombay for about eight years and now back to Pune. In terms of sustainability, uh, yes, I think uh, sustainability began at home for me. Like, you know, it was not a very broad conversation, but uh, like, you know, for me, sustainability was limited to our kitchen where uh, we were like you know from the very beginning uh, of my time on on, on this planet uh, was a very uh, like you know near about zero waste kitchen like you know my mother ran a very zero waste kitchen where almost everything that used to come home used to get consumed in some form or the other Uh, like you know just to give you a sense like you know Loki like you know you cut the skin skin out of Loki so you have the Loki separately but even like you know we used to fry and we used to have uh, Loki uh, skin fry, like you know, something of that sort. So, uh, so we had that kind of uh, conversations at home where nothing used to get wasted, and like you know, I would not say nothing, nothing at all, but yeah, sustainability now is a much, much broader conversation. So, of course, uh, like you know, we have gone above and beyond these 
minor little tweaks uh, like you know that that we did when we were growing up and uh, right now i think uh, uh, like you know we uh, like the kind of community that we live in we are much more aware like you know almost everybody is and like you know the mindfulness has gone up and i think we are following suit yeah that's that's very practical also a very practical approach about what sustainability really is and i see like you know where you're coming from uh, definitely going to try the lucky skin fry so <laughs> thank you for that tip uh, monish what about you tell us about your childhood yeah uh, i think uh, my childhood has been drastically different okay very very different because i am born and brought up in uh, kohima nagaland uh so that was like the first 20 years of my life was spent in a uh, in a state or in a town whose population was less than 50000 so thereby and i think uh, life is very very significantly different in that part of the world so it took uh, no learning to be sustainable right we all were very cognizant that you know we had to save everything we had to because it was a it was a state of limited means right if there was a landslide we it, it meant that for the for the next 15 20 days the ration would be a scarcity right so thereby uh, my father had a very uh, i've always remembered uh, dad uh, been in his garden okay and it was a self sustained garden where we had vegetables we had fruits uh, we even had uh, fresh stock we even had eggs and chicken like you know uh, so thereby uh, sustainability was always like you know whatever happens at home in the kitchen it goes back to the garden okay and uh, uh, has like a long term purpose uh, attached to it okay we always believed in saving water because it was a hill town uh, we had to be very cognizant about our water usage okay so you wash your clothes okay and then whatever the water is saved uh, the, the 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 dirty water or like you know the water with the detergent okay then you you take that same water and you wash your vehicle with it okay once the vehicle is done then you put the same water onto the plants right uh, then you use the same water to clean the surrounding so it was always like you know very very um how do i say immaculate in terms of how you use your resources at the same time i think uh, the school that i went to it was a uh, it was a catholic uh, you know missionary school so thereby uh, the understanding of giving back to the environment giving back to the you know the culture that you belong to uh we had uh, social work uh, saturdays where we used to probably uh, you know b- b- take the initiative of cleaning the town going to the b- the landmark uh, places in the city within the city and clean it up okay uh, spread pamphlets have conversations about uh, saving water have conversations uh, around uh, saving uh, aspects of uh, natural ingredients okay so that's where i lived the first 20 years of my life my first advent into civilization and i'm using the word very very mindfully here was bangalore right uh, when i went to uh, for my studies there and uh, that was like the eye flash moment for me because uh, i saw things for the first time in my life which i had never imagined right uh, you know uh, shorter distances been traveled with cabs shorter distances been traveled uh, with auto rickshaws okay we were used to walking right uh and then uh, started my career and went into uh, the corporate industry started as a writer okay uh, and then uh, like uh, percolated down into different aspects of creative advertising and then finally uh, became a planner for life and uh, was the planner till uh, i joined and we started wicked good in 2021 so that's been uh, the journey and bombay is home now wow monish you painted this picture of juxtaposing like the two end of where one on one end we see a state where there are limited means and while you know other uh, place where we are just uh, recklessly actually using our resources uh, th- this is a very like uh, interesting point of view now but today like both of you uh, you and somalia are building a company together uh, you know with a uh, woman so how are you bringing these different perspectives into your brand now to make it a more sustainable brand mm, i think uh, we have we have started uh, very very uh, differently right so uh, when sustainability is a narrative i think all of us have firm belief uh, believe and conviction that we should be sustainable but the irony and the dichotomy of the topic is that sustainability 
uh, has limited access right if the mass world has to access sustainability from a large scale dissemination perspective like a brand perspective you can be sustainable at home okay uh, you can achieve certain sustainable goals when you are at home in your regular everyday practices but as a brand if you have to inculcate sustainable practices it also means a lot of investment in terms of how you build you manufacture uh, you build that perception of your outlook towards the towards the world right uh, so yes uh, at this point in time i think the the entire initiative of us uh, collaborating with you the disposal company uh, in terms of plastic neutrality has been the first significant step in terms of taking sustainable initiatives and being more responsible to the environment that we belong to apart from that uh, we are a completely made in india uh, brand okay where we use uh, ingredients and where we have a very uh, cleaner way of approaching the health narrative right uh, and kamalia so while monish highlighted the whole environmental and health perspective of sustainability like uh, would you like to touch a little bit upon the whole sustainability angle of social or the governance side of thing in terms of uh, let's say the employee base okay like are those things that uh, you care about like maybe gender pay parity inside the company as your brand go grows or you know just um, hiring for disability like what are your thoughts or, or are those things like right now on the priority list no, no of course i think uh, i think as a as, as a brand uh, like you know there are certain core ethos that we believe in and the first is of course we do not uh, hire basis gender at all we hire basis uh, uh, like you know talent and what anybody brings to the table like you know we don't look at gender at all when we are hiring or like you know even when we are doing anything uh, or any uh, uh, like you know uh, any activities that we undertake uh, within our organization if you look at uh, uh, like you know the gender split uh, within the organization even right now i think we would be a 50 50 monish uh, uh, like you know i think pretty much an even split Uh, yeah yeah I, the marketing and the brand team is all women team except me correct <laughs> brilliant brilliant those are the signs yeah. of yeah. a truly new age uh, brand you know a tu- truly new age correct. business so why another question to you guys is how do you balance the economic side of things uh, while curating a sustainable brand because obviously like you know sustainability can be expensive so thoughts on those that See, I think, uh, like I said, right uh, at this point in time, okay. Uh, unfortunately, okay. Do we have the aim and ambition of becoming uh, sustainable, uh, strongly sustainable with every passing day? At this point in time, uh, unfortunately, our hands are tied, okay. Because as a startup, uh, lean means startup who is yet to finish like a couple of years in existence in the market. Uh, sustainability is a is a space, is a world where uh, we don't have access to. not because we don't want to enter but because sustainability would not permit us to enter that periphery because it is quite uh, economically uh, um, unfortunately unbearable for us at this point in time so apart from the plastic neutrality conversation that we are having okay where we uh, kind of uh, try to uh, unburden the planet okay with the kind of the pet poly that we generate okay and the ingredient narrative uh, i don't think there are any other initiative that we have been part of but said so uh, what are our hopes and ambitions yes we do have plans that you know after a stipulated time of existence uh, we will look into uh, sustainable activities uh, whether it's uh, the brand uh, a uh, product level or been uh, at a conversational and uh, education level right uh, okay. adding to that like you know i think it also because we are so early in the journey still uh, what happens is a lot of uh, like you know uh, sustainability sometimes does become expensive not just for the brand but also for the customer so it takes some time for the customer to also start uh, you know understanding and paying for sustainability and uh, we also want to get to that stage as quickly as possible i think we have started with uh, you with that objective in mind but we do not want to definitely stop there yeah that's 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 very nice to know and what are your final thoughts you know and maybe like a message to your customer be wicked and uh, eat uh, sustainable okay do not compromise on taste do not compromise on indulgence but be a good citizen 
be a good uh, individual and take care of the planet and the earth that you live well i would resonate to exactly what uh, like you know what uh, what moni said in fact i think uh, the way wicked as a word is perceived uh, in the current generation itself has changed completely right i think for a per- like you know a person who uh, like you know stands for sustainability today and becomes the torch bearer of sustainability for the future uh, generations to come the current and the future he is also a person who is very wicked like you know he is wickedly sustainable so uh like you know that is how we want to see uh, like you know the world around us grow because we are getting children into our world who are going to be like you know in this world for the next 80 to 100 years we would want them to see the world with the kind kind of eyes that we have seen like you know our parents have seen no changes like you know it needs to be as natural as it can be and like you know anything and everything that we do today is going to feed into what they see in the future so yes mindfulness sustainability very very important So yes, the only thoughts that we have is be wickedly sustainable in the future. Thank you, thank you so much, guys, and we would try to be wickedly good, just like you guys. Thank you so much. Well, folks, that's the wrap for today's episode. We hope that you too are motivated to become a sustainability champion. So do your bit. Share the link to this episode with your friends and family. Help us spread the word. Every weekend we'll be bringing to you the human side of sustainability with a new story. So be sure to follow the Disposal Company on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn and YouTube. Once again, thanks for listening. Let's heal the planet together.